everyone welcome back so in this last video for inverse functions we're just going to look at some more properties of the inverse uh, by looking at an example of us finding the inverse of a very simple function okay so first of all remember in the last video to find the rule for the inverse what you're doing is you're swapping the values for x and y okay now in terms of a graph if you were to swap the values of x and y, you're swapping the coordinates of x and y. And what's going to happen is your original graph, let's say this blue line here, is going to get reflected along this dotted line, which is the line y equals x. And it will produce the graph of the inverse here, which is this yellow line. Okay, because all you're doing is swapping the x and y coordinates. Now that process might not be very apparent to you. Um, so I'm hopefully going to show you how that works in the next slide. Okay. But that's all you're doing. Okay. To produce the graph of the inverse, we can reflect the graph of our original function about this line y equals x. Consider this your mirror, mirror line. Okay. Now I'll show you in a second how that works. Um, and I'll show you in a second also why this works okay so if we're swapping the x and y values remember your domain refers to the set of x values for which your function is defined and the range refers to the set of y values if you're swapping the x and y values to obtain the inverse that means your domains and ranges are also going to swap around okay because domains refer to x range refers to y if you're swapping them around then what you've got basically is the domain of your inverse is going to be equal to the range of your original because you've swapped the x and y values okay and the range of the inverse is going to be equal to the domain of the original okay so this is the y values of your inverse remember to find the y values of your inverse you're basically swapping for the x values so the x values oh, sorry that's the y values of your original Okay, which you get from swapping it with to the x values of your inverse. Okay, so the x values of the inverse are the y values of the original. And the x values of the original turn into the y values of the inverse. Okay, and that's why the domain of the inverse is equal to the range of the original. And the range of the inverse is equal to the domain of the original. Now, if you don't believe me, let me try and show you how that works. Okay, so here I've got two line segments. We'll start off with this one on the left. Okay, this is some line segment for a particular function f of x, let's say. Okay, and the way that I've drawn it is so that we can see the domain of this particular function. Okay, I've restricted the domain. It's a straight line graph of some kind, and I've restricted the domain. I've restricted the domain to be from 2 to 5. Okay, those are the x values for which my function exists. Okay, so my domain is from 2 to 5. If I look at those points and I then determine what the range is, well, my range goes from negative, uh, from 1 up to positive 7. Okay, there's my range. Now, in order to obtain the graph of the inverse, I'm simply going to swap the coordinates around. Okay, at all points along this original line. Okay, so let's start with this end point here. Okay, so we've got 2, 1. Let me swap those coordinates around and I end up getting 1, 2. So that point here from our original graph turns into this point here on our inverse. Okay, we'll do the same thing for our right hand end point. Original coordinates are 5, 7. To obtain the graph of the inverse, I swap them around and now I get 7, 5, which corresponds to this point here. Okay, now if I started off with a straight line, According to the rules of maths, which we're not going to get into, you should end up with a straight line after you perform this particular kind of transformation. Okay, um, So there's nothing weird going on with taking a straight line and producing another straight line. So that means if I have this endpoint here and this endpoint here, I have to just draw a straight line between them. And that's the graph of our inverse. Okay, Now let's check the domain and range of our inverse. Well, look at the domain. The domain goes from 1 to 7, okay, and the range goes from 2 
to 5. There we go. And you can see that the domain of our original function 2, 5 has become the range of our inverse 2 to 5. And same thing for the range of our original function 1 to 7 has now become the domain of our inverse, which is also 1 to 7. Okay, so that's really interesting. Okay, so when you're presented with the inverse um, of some original function and it's asking for the domain and range of the inverse, so long as you know the domain and range of the original function and so long that that original function is 1 to 1, you can produce the domain and range of your inverse simply by just swapping them around. Okay, so that's an interesting property of our inverse. Now here on Desmos, I've actually graphed them. Um, whoops, don't really need to go there. Okay, so here's a, whoa, apologies. Stupid tablet mode. Okay, there we go. Cool, so I have graphed those two lines on the same graph. Okay, so the original red line is our original function f of x. It has got an equation f of x equals 2x minus 3. Now you can work out your inverse by swapping the x and y values and you should get a uh, equation of inverse equals x plus 3 all over 2. Okay, just by using the normal way that we find the inverse. The other way that you could do it is basically by finding the gradient between the two endpoints. All right, so you figure out m, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, that's m. Then you can use one of these original endpoints for x1 and y1 and use your whole y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 to figure out the equation of the inverse, okay? And you should see that they work out to be exactly the same. All right, but basically I've just graphed those two previous line segments on the same graph. And I've also graphed this green dotted line is the line y equals x. Okay, and you can see that the original graph in red has basically just been reflected along that dotted line and produced our inverse. Okay, so that's one property. Uh, the domains and ranges have swapped, okay, as we just saw. And something also that's really interesting is that this point here, 3, 3, that remains unchanged because swapping the x and y coordinates of that point, you end up with the same point. Okay, three is still three. All right, so if you swap a point that happens to lie along this green line y equals x, then you end up with the same point. Okay, so what's going on there is basically, if your two graphs, your original and your inverse are gonna intersect, they will always intersect somewhere along this line. Okay, now they might not intersect just based on the way that the graph is drawn, um, but if they do intersect, they will always intersect at a point along this line y equals x, okay? Simply because that point does not change when you go from the original to the inverse, okay? Because swapping the coordinates doesn't do anything, okay? So that's another property. Cool. Um, if your original graph doesn't lie along this line y equals x, it, it doesn't intersect that line at all, then it will not intersect your inverse. Okay, so let's say I have a graph that looks like this. It's a parabola of some kind. Actually, a parabola is pretty crap example because it's not one to one. Let's do just a straight line that goes from there to there. Okay, and I try and find the inverse. The inverse is gonna be reflected like that. Okay, but because our original graph does not intersect the line y equals x, that means our inverse is not gonna intersect the line y equals x, and so therefore they can't possibly intersect each other because the only place that they could intersect each other was somewhere along this green dotted line y equals x. Okay, so just some more properties about your inverse. And that's basically it. Okay, so that's all we're gonna talk about for inverse here. Okay, so let's do a quick summary. So your function f only has an inverse if it is one to one. If it's not one to one, then you might be able to find some kind of rule, but the rule will be a little bit messed up. It won't be um, an exact proper function that you could describe with a definition, okay? Um, for example, if you try and find the inverse of y equals x squared, you get positive root x or negative root x. So there's a bit of ambiguity trying to figure out which one you're gonna use because you don't have enough information, okay? So, 
You can though create a one-to-one -one function by restricting the domain. Okay, and we saw that in an example in the last video where we looked at y equals x squared and we restricted the domain in two different ways and it produced two different inverse functions. If you do want to find the inverse function and you already know ahead that your function, your original function is one to one, then to find the rule of your inverse, you just swap x and y. Okay, and then you solve for y. When we're talking about the graphs of our function and its inverse, okay, the graph of the inverse is simply just the graph of our original function reflected about the line y equals x. Okay? And because to find the inverse you swap your x and y values, what that means is the domain of your inverse function is simply equal to the range of your original function, and the range of your inverse is equal to the domain of your original. Okay, due to that fact that we're just swapping x and y values around. Um, now, if your two functions, your function and your inverse, are going to intersect, they will do so somewhere along the line y equals x. Okay, um, if they, if the original function does not intersect with this line y equals x, then it will not intersect your um, inverse function at all. Okay, they'll be completely separate from each other. All right, so that's it. That's our inverse functions done. Um, hopefully you can go away now and sort of work on these inverse functions yourself. Okay, but review the video, make sure you understand all the points that were being made, and I will see you next time.